Let me take my glasses off for this one. <laughs> my country. Yeah. We practice on real patients, human beings. If your arm is broken, sorry. <laughs> Hello guys, if you see this face, you know what time it is. This is an information hub. We don't bring you anything less than the quality information you need. As I said, my name is Priscilla Kuma and I have Choma, aka Diamond, a beauty queen from Nigeria, <laughs> where I grew up. And uh, she lives in the UK. She's in the nursing school. She's an international student studying nursing. So if you want to study nursing in uk or you have a family member or friend loved one boyfriend husband who is interested you want to watch this video to the end do not skip it everybody shout out to all my friends in uk i've been interviewing a lot of them shout out shout out to nanel shout out to um tasha lord shout out to becky and shout out to jenny Lee Mitchell, who ran away from uk to join me <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad to have you choma welcome to my channel introduce yourself and give us the right title, the beauty queen. I want oh, to hear that gosh. one, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, ignore her on the beauty queen thing, please. <laughs> My name is Chioma. I'm also known as Diamond. Um, on I think I'm popularly known as Diamond Oma instead of Chioma. And I'm um, a nursing student in UK, like she has said. Just rounded up my second year, about to start my third year. And I'm here to just give you, you know, guidance on what to do when you want to apply and all of that. Wow, the angry suits my ear, so... Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> so, right. you, I believe you come from Nigeria and you schooled in Nigeria. Yes, so okay. I actually had a degree in Nigeria. Okay. And then even did what is called NYSC in Nigeria. Worked yeah. for a while before coming yeah. down to, you know, for okay. a second degree okay so you did a degree in nigeria what did you study in nigeria and when did you do application wow wow so this is a beauty queen with brains she did science oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she did science this is a beauty queen with brains okay so what um you did microbiology did you apply using your degree that you already had or did you use your high school secondary school certificate to apply for the nurses nursing that you're studying so basically because i had a degree in microbiology in nigeria i think it, it kind of like cut some of the processes for me i'm not too sure in quotes because they i had to mention that i had a degree in nigeria and then someone said i could start from second year instead of third year instead of first year because i already had a degree so I sent an email to the school and they said it wasn't possible. I needed to start from the first year, regardless of if I had a degree. But if I have a degree in sciences, it's just going to help me like skip some of the basic examinations you're going to take and all of that. So I did not take any of the examinations. All they needed to see was my transcript from my university in Nigeria. And it's either a transcript or your certificates of graduation and you needed my high school certificate as well so i had to give them my yx certificate and yeah that was it that, those were like the two um, qualifications i submitted yeah oh yeah so i interviewed a friend recently she's in nursing school in america and she also did she's doing nursing as a second degree she also did some communication first degree and even did masters in communication before switching yeah. to nursing and she has some courses waived for her so if you've already if you already have a degree and you think that it's not meant for me you can start this and uh, skip some courses as well so what are the requirements for somebody who maybe doesn't have the degree do you know the things they have to put together or what documents did you put together to apply for the school because i already had a degree i think i'll speak solely on if you already had a degree in nigeria okay. i okay. know if you don't have a degree i think there's something called ucas that people apply from i don't know the full meaning of ucas i think it's like universities for admission something in uk they give you like okay. a guideline well because i already had a degree i'll just speak solely on if you already have a degree so for me, the first thing I had to do was, I think the basic thing when you want to study a nurse, obviously if you're watching the video, I believe you already know why you want to be a nurse yeah, and all of yeah. that. But that's like literally what backs you throughout your application process because every step of the way, the question comes up on why you want to be a nurse. So the first thing I had to do was, first of all, try to, you know, choose what sort of nursing you want to do. Because mm -hmm. unlike Nigeria or other African countries where the nursing is like, you do all in one. Yeah. Here is like, you have to, pick um either adult nursing children nursing mental health or uh, midwifery so it's first of all how to have to choose what sort of nursing you want to do 
because not all the universities, you know, carry out this sort of nursing. Then when you're able to choose what sort of nursing, you begin to look at what universities you want to go to or what cities or what areas in the UK you want to study. Mm -hmm. So it's like narrowing it down to your choice of course and then your choice of area, location and all of that. Mm -hmm. After that, the next thing you want to do is go through the university's requirements because every university have a different requirement and then see what works for you or tailor it down to what you feel you can work with. Look at the tuition fees and all of that. After getting through your quali um, the qualifications they require, some use agencies, some use consultants. I did mine myself. I, <laughs> I did mine Don't mind trying to save money. So you uh, used an, you didn't use an agency. You were trying to save some small money. <laughs> so it's basically like, because the thought of studying, it's really, it wasn't like it was a pressing need of, I actually want to study nursing. Mm -hmm. It was a case of, I was working, I'll be at work and I'm just trying to research like, what is it like to study in UK? So it was something that like, oh, I noticed this school doesn't have this and then this school has this. It wasn't like a, I made up my mind that they go to I go. And so I think some people use agencies because it's like you always say, they just hold your hands through the entire process and then you don't have to worry about anything. Mm -hmm. But for me, I was killing myself day and night, you know, mm -hmm. researching schools and then researching for requirements and all of that. Mm -hmm. It was really stressful, but I didn't feel it because I was not in a rush. Mm -hmm. It was just a, a gradual process for me. Um, well, so yeah, that's that's that. So um, as I was saying, after making choice of the university you want to apply to, then you um, you know give them whatever they said they want, the documents they want. So you have to. I think it, on every website there's usually like a guideline on how to make your application. So they might tell you they need your transcript, they need this, they need this. And a personal statement, of course, they always require a personal statement as well. Yeah. So a personal statement is just you telling them mm -hmm. a little about yourself, why you want to be a nurse, what inspires you to be a nurse, and why the university. So it's more like selling yourself on why they should, you know, admit you to their university. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, you make your application and then wait for them and they get back to wow. you like within two weeks and stuff, either for an interview date. Mm -hmm. So I had an online interview with, with, I think I applied to about four universities and <laughs> wow. I got feedback from three. I didn't hear nothing from one. Wow. So I had interviews for two the same day. One was like nine o'clock and the other one was like 10 o'clock and the other one was the next day. So I had an interview online. The interview was very brief, like 15 minutes, which is why I said, you need to know why you want to be a nurse because all the questions was basically around why nursing, why adult nursing, why the university and all of that. And um, after the interview process, uh, oh, we had some major questions about nursing as well. What do you think nursing entails? What do you think nurses do? So after the whole process, you know, I had to wait for about a, a month or two weeks to a month. I can't really remember. And then I got an admission letter or I got an offer letter that says, oh, you've been admitted. So it all went down to me making a choice of which one I actually want to go to. Wow. At the end of the day, so after you get your admission letter, you want to accept their offer for admission. When you do that, most of the schools have like requirements for you to get a CAS letter. So it's like a um, certificate of acceptance or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell you, even before you apply, you're going to see somewhere that will tell you before you get a CAS letter, you need to make a deposit of a certain amount. So some unis might tell you to make a deposit of two thousand yeah. pounds for you to get your certificate of um of like certificate of and the two thousand pounds counts towards your tuition fee. So it's like you making a part payment of your tuition fee for the cast letter. And you get your cast letter within two or three days after that, which is what you use to proceed for your visa application. And then going for, so that's that for the university application. It's usually very straightforward and usually very direct. Wow. Then the visa application is where it's usually a, a bit tricky because people tend to make certain errors in the visa application. But I think um, the UK, they call it a tier four visa. And it's usually like very straightforward. It's a points based um, visa application. So it's a case of tick all the boxes you get exactly. Just give them exactly what they ask for and you get your visa. There is usually no two ways about it. I think some of the requirements for the visa application is like obviously you have your cash certificates at the moment. You need to give them your um, bank statements. So your bank statements is where people make errors, like basic errors, because 
they get confused on what to do and how to get the bank statement or what it should look like. So basically, your bank statement should be your tuition fee balance. So let's say your tuition fee is ten thousand pounds a year. You must have given the let's say you gave you paid three thousand pounds to get your cash letter. Obviously, you have a balance of seven thousand mm-hmm. pounds. And then there's um, something called the maintenance fund. There's a way it's calculated. I think if you've got dependents or not, it's it's basically on the, the UK website. So it's basically your tuition fee balance and your maintenance funds need to sit in your account for 28 days and then when doing that you need to be careful of like the currency because if it drops as little as one pound you would not get the difference so it's always advisable let's say what you need to keep in your accounts i'm going to use nigeria naira is like 10 million naira um, obviously it might not be up to i'm just giving a rough mm-hmm. estimate and it drops down to nine point something million because of the exchange rates your visa is going to be denied so what i did is usually advisable like if you need to put 10 million just put like 10.2 10.5 so that regardless of what the exchange rate is when you want to apply you are not affected within that period you can make transactions on your account just ensure it doesn't go below the amount that is expected to be in your account which is um where people make certain errors Mm -hmm. and for the bank statement so it's got the money can either be in your account or your parents account only you can present your brother's account you can present your sister's account you can present your uncle's account so it's either your mom or your dad's account and they have to bring like um a statement of um is it like a letter to support and say oh this is my and I'm sponsoring my daughter or my son. Either has to be your mother or your father, you know, like mm-hmm. sponsoring your um, visa. So it's either, it's, it, and then you have to have like a letter saying, oh, I'm sponsoring my son to study in the UK and I'm happy for him to use my bank account. And um, you get your bank statements, you get something called um, a tuberculosis certificate. So it's usually on the um, UK application websites where to go to to get your tuberculosis certificate in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. When I did it, it was about 39,000 naira or so. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it has changed at the moment. And then you need to also pay IHS health surcharge fee. That was, um, I think it was a little pricey as of when I did. I'm not too sure. I can't remember how much it is. Mm-hmm. But the I- IHS health surcharge fee is something that after making payment and you come into the UK, you get done with uni and you get a job, you get refunded for the IHS fee. So yeah. regardless of how expensive it is, it's something, I think, but I'm not sure it's over a, a thousand pounds or a thousand two hundred pounds, I can't remember, but mm-hmm. when you're done with uni, you obviously get refunded your IHS fee if you remember to apply for it. If you don't apply for it, your money is done. And then, <laughs> so you also need, um, so I've mentioned your um, CAS, tuberculosis, mm-hmm. IHS, bank statements, um, I'm trying to remember what else. Obviously, your supporting documents. These are like the basic things you actually need to prove. And then sometimes, yes, you need to prove accommodation as well in some cases. So you don't need to actually book an accommodation. Some use like the university hostels for a startup. And then you can tell them you've got a family that has um that lives in you know such a so place, but you just have to be um technical about it because you can't tell them you have a family in Scotland and you're studying in London, mm-hmm. you know, and then be able to prove it if they ask you, even mm-hmm. though they are like, We used to prepare for these basic interviews, you don't really, you know, have to have it there and there, but it's just being smart about your application. And um I think those are like the basic things. I can recall that were needed for the um, interview for the visa application process. And then you apply for your visa from um, the UK website to get a visa appointment date and you go for a visa interview. So after, so either you submit a document online to the visa office or you go to the visa office with your document. And then the day of the um, interview, you're going to be asked like a few questions. I think they're usually very, they're usually very brief in quotes. My turn, I don't know what I did to this lady. Everybody was going in and then coming out in five minutes. I was there for about 15 minutes. Because you are sharp and you are full of information. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I, I, I got the people like, oh, it took five minutes. I ran there, five minutes was gone. I'm still there. 10 minutes was gone. I'm still there. <laughs> so they're like, I think I had this list of questions I was asked somewhere. So it's mm-hmm. like, why the UK? Why nursing? You know, it was very 
they were very technical with the questions how much mm -hmm. did you see your parents and if so your parents mm -hmm. are the ones sponsoring you for the exams mm -hmm. for your studies sorry and they're like oh you have a degree before why do you want to study nursing and they'll tell you don't give me a very vague answer of how i how you love to care for people we, we all know we all love to care for people so there should be like a very personal reason on why you want to study nursing which is what they want to hear yeah and then when I was already busy questions, I was expecting them to tell me, oh, you can go. And the lady said, okay, so we've got a few more questions. I'm like, oh my God. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so after the whole, after the entire interview process, um, you have to wait, which was like the longest wait for me so oh, far. Okay. I think you have to wait for 21 to 28 working days. Wow. It feels like 28 years because the wait is unbearable. Yeah. And then... After a while, you get your um, decision if you have your visa, if you have got your visa or not. So it's like a very um, tick box process. It's a very straightforward process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So this is a very detailed information, but let me take you back one step. Yeah. What made you choose nursing? Why the career switch? You were you did science, microbiology, or something? It says. So, why so basically, I've always wanted to study um, either become a nurse or a doctor okay, yeah. so it was bound between these two and then there was really um i i really didn't care if, it was a, if i was actually studying medicine and nursing because i felt like some way we actually played the same role mm -hmm. well nigeria killed my dream in some oh. way yeah. Yeah. so i wrote my first jump in nigeria i think my jump score was 202 my first jump i was in my ss3 when i wrote it and mm -hmm. then i tried to obviously the cut of map for medicine in nigeria was i think the jump score was like 260 it was nowhere near you yeah, know definitely. having that so i got done with university and then i had to try to take jump again i was so scared of writing jump again and then not making a cut of mark and having to sit at home again it became a case of study whatever and just you know get done with school which i know wasn't really a good decision but as of then, that was what I felt like. I wasn't willing to sit at home again. My friends were getting into the university and I'm home. Yeah. And then I applied to study microbiology instead. So it's a case of studying something you really, not you really, I really didn't know what microbiologists do and I just studied microbiology. <laughs> it was a case of just do it to get your degree. And luckily for me, or luckily or, or, or fortunate, I don't know what to call it, mm -hmm. that jam score I had to 62, which was now the high, the cutoff mark for you to study medicine. Yeah. So I went to my university, I told them I had a 262 if I could switch to medicine. And they said, you can't switch from wh whatever cost to medical, to med medicine, but you can switch from medicine to this. So it became a case of up and down. I think my first year in uni in Nigeria, I was literally confused mm -hmm. because I said, okay, why don't I then switch to maybe chemical engineering? So you can imagine, it was literally a case of just get a degree yeah. and just get out. Yeah. yeah. So my mom was literally upset with me at that particular point because it felt like I really didn't know what I was doing with my life. Mind. If only got to a point of switching to computer science. Because I just felt like, in and then, <laughs> and then my department then in Nigeria was like one of the worst departments you can study in. I studied in Anambra State University. It's like one of the, okay. microbiology in Anambra State University was the worst department to be in. It's like no matter how smart you are, you, can, you barely get above a second class lower. So I I just felt literally trapped there. Yeah. It became a case of just get done with school, you know, yeah. get your degree. Funny enough, I graduated from the uni. I think I practiced as a microbiologist for a few months, and I started working as a, a social media analyst. <laughs> really? <laughs> you know, I'm gonna be my PA. Come and assist me with my course. And I also worked as a business analyst. Well, I worked as a marketer. There was nothing I didn't do. Wow. So you look at yourself, and then you you realize like. You really don't have the purpose of what you're doing. Right. It was a case of I know I'm doing things, but I really don't have passion for what I'm doing. So it yeah. became a time. I think there was a time I, I was working in a company, and then I was um, one of like the not really a marketer, but like you know we it was a bridge between our company and the next company. It was a very good role to have, but I wasn't enjoying it. Every yeah. day you go to work, I wasn't enjoying what I was doing. Yeah. So it became a case of why don't you just you know look into what you feel you've always wanted to do and then just do it and i became worried because i felt like oh i had a degree already it was me going back to school all over again me studying you know how you graduate and you're like i would never open a book again <laughs> so it became a case of going back to school again but i just felt like and it was three years because nursing in uk is three years but i felt like 
three years is still going to come by regardless if I do the nursing or not. So why don't I just go ahead and just do what I wanted to do? And I tried to apply for medicine, which is the um, honest truth. I think medicine was five years. Looking at the tuition fee for five years, it was too much. So I felt these two areas are something I have passion for, regardless of what it is. And I, I'm very happy I made the decision because regardless of how difficult it is, I would rant and rant and rant and after I come back from a clinical placement and the next day I'm going back happily again. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So. Wow. Wow. So yeah. it's very true. I can relate to most of the things you say. Um, yeah. Fortunately, our schools don't have a, a career gui guidance or no, session no. to guide you. You are just a young kid. You are 12, 13, 14. You don't know what you're doing. You just want to, you know, get a yeah. degree, get a university certificate and you yeah. just want to get done with it. So that was my case. Yeah. And they kill our dreams. There are people that I schooled with that couldn't do medicine in Ghana. But oh my God, I had people. They are doctors in America. And yeah, yeah, I had people that actually graduated with first class as well. And then when you see them today, you're like, you know, it's. And then people who you know literally did nothing. And well, it's just it kills dreams. Now, I, I would say some. I yeah. mean, it's not favorable to say, but that was my fair share of you know my yeah. country. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> it's the same to almost all African countries, unfortunately. But this yeah. countries that we find ourselves in are equalizers. They give you opportunity and you can be whatever you want to you be. You can be whatever you want to be. What, and the support I, is there. The support is there. The support is there. It is. So you spoke about the money involved here and then here and there. Is nursing strictly paying out of pocket? There's no scholarship? So if you are an international student, it is strictly out of your pocket. Oh, wow. Except you probably live in UK or you have a residence in UK, then you're entitled to like student loans and all of that. But if you are an international student, it's strictly out of your pocket. You are not too worried about it. Um, but yeah, it's but... about knowing the right thing to do and the right people to follow because mm -hmm. there are people that actually do it alone and they, they make it true. So it's a case of getting the right information on how to carry on that all yeah so now let's zoom in into nursing school in uk so you already mentioned the program is three years what are you studying and the first what which year level are you right now and the first year how was it for you so the first year i struggled a bit especially with academic writing because yeah. it was entirely different from what we did in right. nigeria yeah. education here is i love it because it's very straightforward it's very still up to you i would say if you're struggling yeah. your lecturers know you're struggling and they come up to you mm -hmm. So my first year, I had a bit of struggle with my first assessment because it was literally writing. I did not know where to start from. But these lectures are like very, I think they're teaching like the simplest words. It is very, very easy to understand. It is very, very, you see them go through something over and over and over again. I feel like there is no way you would not understand it if you want to understand it, except yeah. you are really not serious with it. Understand it yeah. So it's a, and then it's uh, it's been in the UK. It's somewhere you can actually be easily distracted as well. So mm -hmm. it's a case of, do you want to know it? You would know it because the yeah. sources are there for you to know it. If you want to be distracted, oh, you will be hundred percent distracted at the same time. <laughs> yeah, so my first year, because they do like it's a divided um, learning. It's you do like um, half um of academic work and then the other half is going to be like clinical assessments which is you go into the hospital and then you work with nurses and then you are assessed from your first year mm -hmm. so the case of your first three months might be you're, you're learning about something it might be um you know trying to carry out basic care or the carrying out prim um, simple observations on patients that's what you've done and then how to like approach patient values and ethics of nursing yeah. So they expect you, the next section of your learning, they expect you maybe for the next six weeks to go into the hospital mm -hmm. and practice what you've learned. So it's a blended learning. You might have been taught how to carry out the CPR and, you know, all of that. So it's a case for you to now go into the hospital and look for opportunities to actually practice these things. So the clinical placements, you could be taken anywhere. Mm -hmm. My first placement, I think I was in... Um, Ian, Ian was and Truth's um, Max Fax ward, yeah. And then the second placement, I was in like a rheumatology to the day case unit. So it's a blended learning. And then you have like um, different ways of assessing you. It could be examinations, it could be 
presentations, it could be anything. But the good thing is before you actually do it, you've had loads and loads of guidelines and mm. loads of support on how to, they literally tell you what to do. Yeah. You just have to do it in your own words. Yeah. So that was my first year. And then in UK, your first year is not graded. Mm. But you must pass every course in your first year to get into your second year. But it doesn't count towards if you're coming out with the first class or you're coming out with the second class. Oh, I so see. It, so you only just do the first year for you to be like a stepping stone on yeah. getting, you know, getting to know mm -hmm. what's happening in lesson. And then, but you must pass all of them to get to the second year. But the second year is where the trouble, where, where the whole headache starts. <laughs> <laughs> so the, second, the second year, you've got your OSCE, you've got your pharmacologies, you've got your medicine management, you've got, it starts like the whole mm -hmm. basic thing starts in second year you get into the hospitals you the, the nurses expect you to have some sort of independence so if you have a patient who is doing poorly they expect you to initiate what you think the problem is are they running a temperature do you think is an infection you know mm -hmm. yeah. it's they expect to be more independent in your second year so it's just a gradual process so for me now i just completed my second year yeah. and then by september i should be in my in my final year and the good thing about it is from your third year you are entitled to begin to apply for jobs in UK. Oh, wow. So even now when I go to work and they're like, oh, do you know where you want to work yet? I'm like, I don't know yet. And they're like, there's some people already apply for jobs in cardiology, intensive care units, ED. Wow. So it's like from the beginning of your third year, because you're in UK, it's designed in a way like you're entitled to start you know applying for jobs and the jobs are waiting for you before you even graduate from from yeah. school yeah. and then uh, it's also i think also if you're going to apply to certain words you don't even need to do an interview for some trust mm. all you have to do is make an application they have an open day sell yourself to them on that day and you have your job wow. but then i think you have some like critical words like maybe mm. itu and ed yeah. they actually want you to do interviews but aside those critical words like acute care, you just, you know, tell them, I want to work here. And then they set up an open day for you. you just talk yourself through and you have your job waiting for you, pending when you graduate. Yeah. So it's very, um, it's favorable in every sense. It's yeah. what's the stress, but it's stressful. But it's what's it stress. is. Nursing school, <laughs> school is so stressful. I did it back in Ghana yeah, and most of my classes in Africa is four years. I recently just found out that it's three um, college or uni is three years in, in, in UK and that was yeah. I didn't know that. So oh, three years, yes. Oh nice. Well everybody, whether you are a nurse, whatever college in UK is three years. Well, so, so I think it's just is it medicine that's five years. Well usually uni in UK is just three wow. years. But I, I don't know, there's this new, I, I'm not too sure, I think there's this new thing they're doing. So if you want to do like adult nursing and mental mm -hmm. health, mm -hmm. there's I think there's an adult health and mental health nursing now that takes four years. Oh. So you are, with your qualification, you can practice as both an adult nurse and a mental health nurse, but it takes four years for the for you to qualify. I just yeah. heard of it recently. I'm not too sure how it works, but yeah. Okay. So if you're looking at having like a multiple degree in one, it's a good thing to want to do adults and children at the same time. It's just going to cost you an extra year. And then, yeah. Yeah. So with the your job waiting for you whilst you're in school, America actually allows you to, the same way that your job waits for you before you go and take the NCLEX. Mm -hmm. NCLEX is a US licensure. You need to be able to practice in the US for those watching. And I was working in floor where the girls come for clinicals and stuff and uh, desk placements, <laughs> and they already have their job and they have exactly stuff. yeah. It was like I have a job on uh, in the ICU starting July first. I'm taking my class like maybe June twenty fifth. That's or the way it is. Yeah. yeah. So they already have their job study and everything. I'm like, oh my god! And we are so many nurses back home who have the qualification and sitting home because they can't find a job and it's, it breaks my heart. But anyway, I'm glad that you're sharing these details with us. You are very, very detailed and I love all the steps that you've taken us through. And most nurses in UK have reached out to me wanting me to do a video about people who have schooled in the UK because the UK system is more like what we have in Ghana. You do a diploma in psychiatry and you do it and you do it like three and years. And it's just, yes. Yes, but in the u.s the system wants you to have, be a general nurse first before mm. you can now go and specialize in psychiatry midwifery whatever oh yes do. because i think for i don't know if it's like that before but the yeah. session before mine and then my session they, what they do now is in your second year 
yeah. you have like six weeks or a month yeah. of blended learning so i had to do two weeks of mental health nursing and two weeks of children nursing just for you to have those hours that okay. makes up um the experience you need because I, I think they said sometimes before now they just do strictly adult nursing but then okay. i had a module on like mental health nursing which is like a clinical placement as well okay. and then i had one on children's placement as well which i don't think they usually i don't know if they did it before but i did it so it was more like an insight i mean i don't know if it counts towards the hours of you know actually having all the experience but it's mm -hmm. a case of it was part it's, it is now part of your qualification so you're an adult nurse but you've had simulations in mental health in children yeah. nursing as well but yeah. not in we don't we didn't do mid with free no it was just children's oh. health and okay. um, children's nursing and then mental health nursing yeah so america wants you to have be a SEN, but be a general nurse first before you specialize. And but yeah. there are states luckily there are self psychiatry nurses like how they are in the UK or Ghana. So that is very good. And uh, how has life been as an international student living um, in the combining studies? And you were COVID nurse. I'm sure you were studying online along along the line when COVID hits and all. Um, that. How has they been for you? Everything questions and questions. I love questions. Personally. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think I have loved it. I know Chima will love it too. Because my lectures are online. <laughs> I see. And then some of my examinations were online. Imagine having for my college exam and you're writing it in your living room. Oh, it was okay. it was a bliss <laughs> for me. <laughs> but aside that, it was stressful because early this year I had COVID myself. Oh yeah, I did too. And <laughs> I was, you know, battling with headache and you know, mm -hmm. running nose, and I had an examination to uh -huh. write within that period as well. It was stressful, mm -hmm. and it's a case of let's say you just recovered from COVID and then you get back to the hospital, mm -hmm. and you are being assigned to a COVID patient. You know that mental stress of, fam. I literally just came off from having COVID, mm -hmm. and you're sending me back to a COVID okay. patient as well. It's mentally stressing. It's yeah. fair. Yeah. And then life as an international student generally, I'll tell you if you're coming to study nursing in the UK, sacrifice those three years of your life because mm -hmm. it's gonna take it. But the good thing about it is it's worth it at the yeah. end of the day. When I came in initially, my first year, like I said, I was playing around because mm -hmm. obviously your scores are not counting towards. Mm -hmm. I felt that was what nursing school was gonna be like. Mm -hmm. But my social media account, I think you would I mean those that follow me will notice like my posts uh, became very inconsistent. I began to run away from social media because I felt Toma like... is a big big on social media. She has one thirty three k subscribers. So... Oh my god! <laughs> but to my my Instagram handle like that month. Your Instagram, one. yeah, yeah. But I had to like post because I felt like whatever we're doing is we're doing well. You can't yeah. get these two things along at no. the same time. No. I'm going for That's clinical cool. placement. You're coming back. You have assessment. You have school work, and you need to work as well as an international student. Like I was telling you, I just oh, came up from a night yeah. shift. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> How many hours are you allowed to 20 hours a week so 20 hours a week before covid if you're working in the nhs your okay. time your hours are, li are like um unlimited okay. if that's correct so, yeah so before the whole covid and pandemic thing mm -hmm. it was limited to 20 hours in a week okay during the covid and the whole pandemic if you're working in the nhs you are not limited to 20 hours so i work as much as i feel like i can it was keeping the pounds. <laughs> I can carry it because yeah. so that's why I said it's favorable to me because yeah. I can go for my night shift, come back, turn on my laptop, and then join a lecture. But yeah. obviously, if I'm having to go into classes every day, you wouldn't be able to go to a night shift, come back. Mm -hmm. and then, so my last third semester was people were excited to get back to class. I wasn't excited to get back nah. to class because I had to work <laughs> less. <laughs> yeah, I know. You have to yeah. Do I was working for like once in a week or maybe weekends because your Monday to Friday is just occupied with schoolwork and they like to keep you engaged. So it's not a, it's a case of you have a lecture and you take to write a reflection on your lecture. You can't write a reflection if you weren't really in the lecture. So yeah. it's usually very, they try to make sure you are actually engaged. Last night, I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, I had, a, I went for, I went for a shift, turned on my laptop, so I turned the lecture and I slept off. Aww. And then I woke up and everyone was talking about, oh, we have a presentation on Friday. I'm like, <laughs> I'm so. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my god what presentation are you talking about what's yeah. going on and they're like oh never mind it's just practice for the dissertation for third year i'm like oh bless so it's a case of every little every little time you miss you've mm -hmm. actually missed something so yeah. it's a case of if you want to study nursing for three years mm -hmm. dedicate to three years to study nursing and then after the three years 
you're good yeah. and then also to mention i think i remember you said something about NCLEX for us so yes. here we don't do like any certification exams after qualification really no so it's a case of qualify <laughs> there's something called the nmc here yeah. so once you are done i think you apply to the nmc i think it's about 120 pounds i'm not sure don't quote me on that mm -hmm. and then you just submit and tell them just basically telling them fam i'm done and they give you your pin really yep so there's no suspicion <laughs> exam or anything <laughs> hey, this is really easy it's really easy so i mean for people wow. that are using the wanting to use the uk as a stepping stone mm -hmm. to you mm -hmm. know Mm -hmm. move to the us or something personally yeah. i would advise you to because i think it's even it's less time so it's three years compared to the us so i'd have like, mm -hmm. like like four years so it's like less time do it here it's easier <clears throat> when you're done then mm -hmm. you have your certificates you go to the next stage of trying to take your nclex yourself yeah. because it's like it wow. just it's just way easier than yeah. all the headache okay. of going through school and then i'm writing a license and exam again even yeah. though if you want to migrate you still yeah, come back still to the right NCLEX. but if you don't want to mm -hmm. you're good to go okay so how is childcare? when it comes to like general life if you've mm -hmm. got a family in uk i think it's the same for everywhere abroad if you're mm -hmm. single it's easier mm -hmm. if you're married it's easier because you've got a partner as well mm -hmm. if you're a single mom or yeah. a single dad, you're in for it. Yeah. There is literally no two ways about it. Mm -hmm. So I've seen people here, you know, people that have got kids and stuff, what they do is, because you're in the university, there's a sort of community, you know, mm -hmm. you have a friend that has a child and then you have another friend that has a child. So yeah. what you basically do is, it, I think there's like, a, a, there was a group chat created one time for like, mm -hmm. you know, something Bring like that. Bring the kids that. over. Mm -hmm. So the case of, I'm working, I'm, I'm free this weekend. If mm -hmm. you're working, I'm happy to take your kids. So mm -hmm. for my university, they had like a kind of a, a community that was helpful to people. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have that, you're looking at getting like child minders and au pair. Man, what you're paying the child minders and what you're literally earning. So it's going to be a case of you working and then paying the child minders. So it's, it's going to be a very difficult situation if you don't have the support yeah. for your child. So imagine you've got kids to attend to, you've got work to do, you've got lectures, you've got assignments. Mm -hmm. It's literally very, very stressful. It's just, I don't know really yeah. what to I emphasize feel, on that, but it is really stressful. It's stressful everywhere, back home, wherever. It's, it's a stressful here. Yeah. Especially if you don't have nobody to give you a hand, it's a stressful. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm enjoying this conversation. Another question is going to be two in one. How accommodation for students, how do you do it? You already mentioned you have to put an address. Maybe you're coming to your your family member who is around yeah. or something so did they do they provide accommodation for students do you have to yeah so when i home? when i came because i did not when i mean when i came i had nobody in the uk to come to it was just a solo man journey yeah <laughs> so what i did was i did not know the city where i am mm -hmm. and then i had a lot of advice from people telling me make sure you don't pay for a house before you get here and make sure mm. you're here before you get a house mm. and then i came in a time where you had to isolate for yeah. was it 14 days before yeah. you actually move around so the case of getting a hotel for 14 mm -hmm. days and then mm. you know trying to look around where you can even get a house and regardless of whatever whatever people want to say if you're a person of color it is different obviously yeah. coming yeah. in and then you don't know your way around mm -hmm. so what i did personally was i applied to my university accommodation for the sole purpose of my visa application mm. so i did not have the intention of living in my university accommodation mm. but i applied to them and mm. they don't make you pay until you actually come oh, cool. and you're entitled to cancel when i think no, no 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 they give you a specific period of time of cancellation after applying and then if you don't want to make a payment you're entitled to cancel so I made an application. I had my application that says I have applied mm -hmm. to the hostel in my university, which is what I use for my visa application. Mm -hmm. So I was asked accommodation, you know, I'm like, yes, I applied to my university accommodation. I give them the name of the campus, which is true because I already applied. Mm -hmm. I got my visa and I canceled my accommodation because I wasn't ready to. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it is more expensive to live in the university accommodation. But when you come in, private housings are usually cheaper. So it's like getting a house splits, you know, house share and then you might get you know depending on where you live in in uk the price varies but it's always very cheaper than living in a university accommodation wow 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 so any 
advice, regrets, anything that you think I should have done it this way or I didn't do it this way. For somebody who is behind, who is trying to get into UK to come study nursing or come study anything else or be an international yeah. student. Any little tips you want to leave before we call um, it a day? I think one of the mistakes I've heard people talk about is as not in nursing, but coming to the UK to do some master's master mm -hmm. degree courses. It's like mm -hmm. you get done and you really don't get a job. Yeah. Personally, advice I give people is if you exceed certain courses, which I don't want to be, you know, obviously healthcare sector, computer sciences, and then some sectors, yeah. just try to do your research properly, regardless of what you want to do. Another tip I want to give is sometimes you might find out that the university is very cheap. Mm -hmm. Try to find out the cost of living of where the university is. Because one trick I found out is you might find a city where the cost of living is so cheap and the yeah. university is very expensive. Yeah. And then where I live is one of the expensive areas in, in UK. My mm -hmm. university happens to be one of the, like, it's actually cheap, but then the cost of living is expensive. Mm -hmm. So it's a case of, you know, take your time to do research. It's a big move you want to make. It's, you're not just leaving your house, you know, to the mm -hmm. streets. It's you're trying to, you know, invest into your future. So take your time. Another advice I want to give people is people will tell you to leave Nigeria, leave Africa and come to UK to start nursing. And they'll tell you, never mind, you're going to work to make money to pay your fees. I'm telling you boldly, in as much as you're going to do it, I don't want to say it's a lie because you can do it. You're going to struggle. <laughs> and the struggle is not just struggle like it's it is stressful yeah. i always advise people if you can let's say your tuition fee is ten thousand are you able to do you have like four thousand mm -hmm. something to actually sustain you pending when you know you find a job because you don't come in and get a job immediately no and then some of the tuition fees are like instrumental you can break down into six months so do you have at least your next installments pending mm. when you have a job Mm -hmm. else you find yourself coming into the uk you, you're home for two weeks yes, your next installment is coming up you need to pay two thousand pounds and you have nothing yeah you see our people then running around you know yeah. it's so that's one basic advice i tell people try mm -hmm. to plan yourself at least the first three months of when you're coming in mm -hmm. that way you can settle in properly mm -hmm. and then carry on from there mm -hmm. and then another thing is um if you're thinking about studying this and come do it <laughs> yeah it is you would not regret it because mm -hmm. i was speaking to priscilla the other day i'm like oh yeah i probably want to come to the us i, will, I probably want to do this so it gives it um any option a, yeah. it gives you a wide range of option of what mm -hmm. to do you might decide to stay here it's like a golden ticket to mm -hmm. a better life so it's yeah. like decide what you want to do and then you do it but the process to get it yeah. is stressful but it's yeah. what it's at the end of the day because i feel like i did microbiology in nigeria for four years or five and the degree was it's i don't want to say it's a waste but literally it's a waste it's a waste I, I remember going to the lab here in uk and then somebody was telling me since you had a degree why don't you just get a job as a microbiologist mm -hmm. and i looked around me i saw the equipment there my sister i did not know don't see them before. i don't know what it is the <laughs> first time i saw a microscope in my university was in my third year um sorry my final year in in oh. nigeria and they'll tell us to stand in a file stand in it don't touch it just look. <laughs> Let me take my glasses off for this one. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I'll tell you, don't touch it. Just look and pass. And then you're looking, I tell you, that is the bacteria. And you're telling me to come and work as a microbiologist where I'm seeing machines and equipment. I don't know what it is. So, but here it's a degree that it's worth yeah. it. It's worth yeah. the investment. So, yeah. yeah. That reminds me of they normally have this quiz in Ghana. All the high schools, they, they bring their good students, they groom them, they call the National Science and Math Quiz. And the school that won for the whole Ghana, they had to go for a competition in Dubai. They yeah. got them, they were last because they have not seen any of the people. No before. idea. Oh my, uh, I went for my test. I went for um, a blood screening and they were like, oh, it's since study microbiology, why don't you work here? I thought we looked around. I'm like, I don't even know what these things are. <laughs> Where will I start from as a microbiologist? And you're like, oh, you know, it's the pandemic. We actually need a microbiologist now to try to try to, you know, find a solution. I'm like, so is it for, so is it what? for what? <laughs> <laughs> what solution? Do I even know how to groom a bacteria? Like, what solution? <laughs> no I mean, trial. The experience might be different with everybody. I'm just saying my own candid no, truth on my own the side. The same. Or uh, maybe maybe I wasn't paying attention in, in my university no, no, no. in Nigeria. But personally, I learned I don't know what whatever I said. I'm about in environmental microbiology, petroleum micro petroleum what? Petroleum guinea. 
<laughs> it's not just you. It's just you. It was just yeah. So that's yeah. that. Anyway, how can you have only one microscope for a, a class of two hundred and something? So, I, I'm telling and you, like first day I got into my microbiology <laughs> lab was in my final year. Oh my god. And uh, I remember then we had to stand in line and they'll put you into circles and tell you to <laughs> don't, if you touch it, you pay. <laughs> if you, if you break anything, anything, you pay. Damn. <laughs> if you break anything, you pay. So it was, it was just, yeah. It's horrible. It's horrible. I know but then I here for yeah. simulations for nursing, you have like real oh. life um oh. mannequins, you know, that are actually booting. You can actually touch it, tell you to explore, touch it, feel it. Do you, do you have patients? Do you have um real life patients? Patients oh, so that yeah, there's a job in America where mm -hmm. you apply and work and be a patient. We had such kind of patients. They came in. They're actors. I don't know if they're actors. actors. Or, they're they're actors. actors. So we use them for our actors. That's the oh word. my gosh! During the examination, and then mine, mine was really people. nice anyway. Oh, okay. Some, some people were like. They are, they're trying to count their reps and they're coughing and like bloody stop coughing i'm trying to count how many i'm trying to count your reps on your coughing they're actors yeah actors yeah so they're like different ways for you to to yeah. to learn it's just yeah. you know i remember trying to, how to carry out vinipuncture and cannulation yeah. we had an actual arm and then had like yeah. a, you can see yourself actually taking the blood from the arm it is like things i help you yeah. learn I'm like my country yeah. <laughs> We practice on real patients, human beings. If your arm is broken, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the child has to come back. We have to miss to give. Yeah, it's rather <laughs> unfortunate. We are not throwing shade to our countries. It's not because we live in UK, US. That's why we are doing this. Nah. But all of you watching this in Africa can relate. You all went through the same educational system. So if you want nah. to change the destiny or give your kids a better life, even just for yourself, you feel I'm already fifty-two, whatever. Just enter, go to a Western world, settle down, leave your kids, then you can go back. You wouldn't regret it. Your mm -hmm. kids will not go to a competition and not, not know what a microscope nah, is. Nah, not at yeah. all. Yeah. Any last words before we sign up? This has been lengthy but very interesting, and I know you're well, going to be back again. So, any last words? Well, I think I've said it all, basically. So, like I said, whatever you want to do, make a proper research on what you want to do. If you have that dreams in you, trust me you can do it people in more difficult situations have happened yeah. to get by one way or the other i always tell people you don't know how much you can do till you're acting in that situation yeah. so you might find a tuition fee of let's say fifteen thousand pounds a year and you feel like oh my god how can i do it mm -hmm. take the first step there are people doing it here so it's a case of meeting the right people asking the right questions if nobody says it's going to be easy but yeah. you're going to get through it you know yeah. so it's my myself for example when I remember coming and then my mother and I would be in the bedroom in the middle of the night thinking, oh, where do we start from? But here I'm literally, you know, going into my third year. I look I look back today and it feels like the time literally just went by very quickly. So it's it's a case of if you have a dream, work towards it, you know, make a proper research. Make sure you're taking the right step because it's one thing to have a dream. It's another thing to take a wrong step. So make sure you're taking the right step. And then... Um, I always um, watch my consultants' videos. <laughs> always watch. I don't have a YouTube channel. I literally don't have the time for it. I'm moment. trying to get I, you on it. <laughs> I might have in future, but right what? now, nah. I mean, I still have too many pharmacologies and medicine management to get by with. So yeah. at the moment, just stick to her channel and then you get every... I know she talks about US, but this is her bringing you content about UK at the moment. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. So what is your um, social media handle if you want them to go subscribe to your IG or anything? Just drop so, them. Um, I'm literally on um, Instagram only okay. at the moment. So it's okay. Diamond Omar. So Diamond O-M-A mm -hmm. underscore one on Instagram. You can follow me. I don't really post much in quotes. <laughs> go and look at her fabulous photos. Go it's just her, lifestyle. The, the crown on her head over there. Go oh, check God, her out. Stop so, it. Yeah. I'm blushing. Stop it. Yes, I like you it. Are. <laughs> yeah, you, are, you are beauty with brains. So oh, stop it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do now. <laughs> that one, thank you very much. It's been nice having you. We, we can continue on this for the next 10 hours, but we all have to go. I really, really appreciate you coming on here, volunteering to share this information. You watch now, Sai. She's already said it. Whether you do it or not, the time is gonna pass. The time is gonna go. Yeah. So you just wanna make use of that time. Thank you very yeah. much, and I'll see you. Bye bye. All right.